So now I would be the first to tell you that the freight broker business is a profit driven business. As freight broker business owners, we must be focused on profits. We must understand how profits affect our business. We must earn profits consistently over a period of time in order for our business to be successful. But at the same time, we shouldn't be so focused on profits that we selectively forget to leave enough meat on the bone so that your carrier can feast as well. Because just because you have a signed rate confirmation does not mean that the deal is signed, like, sealed, and delivered. And it is not a so done deal until the driver actually picks up that load. And there's a lot of things that can happen between him signing a rate confirmation and actually picking up the load. One thing being, he could cancel. So I want to show you in this video today how you can avoid going from a $500 commission to a $100 loss. So come on inside, sit back, relax, and let's get down into the business. Now I use the term selectively forget. Others may say that you're being greedy. I don't think you're being greedy at all. At least I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here. What usually happens is you're trying to make up where you have losses in other places. Or you may see loads that you're getting ready to move and you're not gonna make as much money as you wanna make, so you're trying to make it up in these areas. I get that, that happens all the time. But we wanna be careful with that as well because we don't want to have a $500 commission go to zero because we're trying to make up. Now don't get me wrong, if you can make up, you definitely should. Do I make up in some lanes? Uh, but I'm always conscious, I'm always aware of what's going on because there's a driver in that lane. There's somebody who is moving a load in that lane, so I have to make sure that I'm not getting too much and not leaving him what he deserves. Because you don't wanna be one of those type of brokers that's just so focused on making profit on this one lane till you forget about carriers, and then you don't take into account that this is just one lane and you're gonna be using this carrier again. It's not about getting a carrier one time and never using them again. It's about using that carrier, especially if, it's, if he does a great job, you wanna use him again. Building a network and how you build a network, a part of it, number one is having consistent loads and another part is having profitable loads, having loads that carriers look at and say, hey man, there's a decent amount of money, there's a decent amount of profit in this load, this is the type of broker that I wanna work with. And I think the question that you have to ask yourself as a new freight broker is can I afford to be small and cheap? I don't think so. I think bigger freight brokerages get away with being cheaper because they have a larger market share, they have more loads, a small new and cheap freight broker is going to have a problem because you don't have as many loads. So drivers can sit back and say, hey, we're not gonna take those loads. We're not gonna move those loads. And if they don't, then you end up with a number of loads that you cannot move. And now you have to take those loads back to the shipper and ask for more money or give those loads back to the shipper. And I don't like either of those options. I'm the type of person that if I give a shipper a price in a lane, I'll do everything that I can to stand behind that price. I am going to honor that price, even if I lose in the lane. So the trick is to make sure that I get the price right. That's the responsibility that I have to the shipper and the carrier, to get the price right so it works for the shipper, and of course, it has to work for the carrier, and you know I have to get paid as well. So with these things considered, here's a quick scenario of how you go from a $500 profit to a zero commission and possibly a $100 loss. All right, let's say for example, you have a lane that you normally move all day long at $2,000 and you have a total of $2,300 in the lane. And on this day, you notice that trucking capacity is really, really good in this lane. So you look around and you say, hmm, I'm gonna to try to make some additional money in this lane because I have a lot of trucks. So you say to yourself, how can I make 500 instead of making $300 in this lane? Oh, and you see, okay, I can drop this lane to 1800 since I have a good amount of capacity in this lane and then I'll make $500 instead of the $300 that I'm gonna make. So you start talking to carriers and you get a carrier to agree to the $1800 in that lane. But here's the problem. Earlier, you remember I mentioned that the deal is not signed and delivered, it's not done until the carrier actually picks up the load. Even though you have a rate con and all of that good stuff signed, that doesn't mean anything until the carrier picks up the load. And lo and behold, 24 hours prior to the load moving, the phone rings. At least you have time still. But guess who it is? It's the carrier. 
<laughs> he's calling to say, hey, we're canceling that load for whatever reason. Maybe he has a mechanical issue or whatever the situation may be. He's going to give you a reason as to why he's canceling the load. That may very well be the reason. But oftentimes the real reason is, is because he's gone out and looked at the load board and he's found other loads that were paying two or three hundred dollars more than the load that he took from you. So now that he's canceling, you're left with that load and you only have 24 hours to move it. Now that's not necessarily a bad amount of time. You can easily get a move, a load moved in 24 hours, but you were making five hundred dollars on this load. Now you have to start that process all back over again. And when you start going to the load board, maybe trucking capacity is not the same now. Maybe the, the trucking capacity has changed in favor of trucks. So now instead of making $500, that truck is coming to you at $2,300 or $2,400. And now you're breaking even or perhaps losing $100 on the load, which is why we always want to be mindful. We always want to keep it in our minds that if we decide to go less in a lane, there's always a chance that there are other loads out there that are higher than that load. So, you know, of course, truckers can keep looking. And if they keep looking and they see those loads, there's a possibility they may cancel your load. So stay competitive in lanes, even if it requires you to make $200 less on a load. Let's say instead of making 500, you're making 300. That's not a bad margin at all. So always be mindful of margins. Always be mindful of the fact that somebody else is out there competing. There are other loads out there and your load could be cancel because you're just too low. But yes, there will be times where the reward is worth the risk. Sometimes you'll go ahead and push the envelope on a lane like that because you feel strongly about it and it could work out in your favor. But there are times where it could blow up in your face. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you're interested in learning more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a link in the description. It's my five video series titled how the load movement process works. It will give you a look into the freight broker business, let you see how it works. That way you can look at it and learn before you come into it and have a better understanding of it before you make that decision. And if you want to learn more about the load board, how we use it to search for trucks, post our loads, and as a rate sourcing tool, I'll also leave a free Free video right here. So until the next time, I please wish you the like, very best subscribe, in your life and, and click the bell so See you don't miss anything. Because the bottom is much too crowded.